there is only one planet we call home as of now we know only earth as a place where there is life but outside earth there is only one place where there has been continuous human presence for the last 25 years so most millennials we have had continuous human presence on the international space station i have with me dr sharmila bhattacharya namaskar namaskar she is a biologist by training has done many flown many experiments to the international space station the international space station is a football field sized laboratory orbiting the earth at about 400 kilometers above the earth uh, dr sharmila what is the kind of biology and science especially biological science and human science which has been done at the international space station and you are a specialist you have yourself done that yes yes so exactly like you said since november of 2000 we have had almost continuous presence of human of humans of crew uh maintaining and managing the international space station and a big part of their job was to do science so the first several years you know went into setting up the station and the laboratory that is there and then for the last you know uh, close to 15 to 20 years we have been doing very active science as an international community and there's been all kinds as as you ask for biological sciences there's been all kinds of experiments done by a variety of people looking into for example muscle loss bone density loss cardiovascular changes changes in the the circulation the circulatory system in the body immune changes a uh, kidney stone formation um a variety of things so all of this together has really helped us build up that story because remember we as a human uh, species we are adventurous we are explorers so going to the international space station being there for this period of time and many of the astronauts have been there for you know several months to over a year right oh, one of them has been there for um, more than 2 years exactly right? exactly and so what that is building up to the more data you gather the more ready you are for a longer stay on the moon and then on to mars right we want to get to mars we've been to mo- the moon before we need to get back to test certain things but then we want to go back go on to mars because that's a new destination we think there's water you know under the surface of mars that we could utilize right so is this biology experiments all in preparation for creating another human habitat outside earth and beyond the international space station yes absolutely the international space station has served as a valuable space laboratory that teaches us to as to what to expect right so then the next step is indeed uh so actually one of the uh, other helpful things is when the international space station uh, gets to its end of life there'll be a commercial low earth orbit destination which will also be very helpful because that will continue to do science because even though we've been doing science for the last 20 years we still have more that we need to figure out and so having the commercial low earth orbit destination as the next will be very helpful but then we want to then continue by going back to the moon and then on to mars because like you said the the habitats or the habitation or the experiments that we do on the surface of mars will have to be much longer duration sure it takes 10 months to go to mars exactly. one way ticket 6 to 9 months mm-hmm. at a minimum mm-hmm. one way and then you want to stay there for a few months and then 6 to 9 months to come back so you really need to understand those two year you know one and a half to two year long durations at a minimum in this deep space environment with elevated radiation with reduced gravity now that's the thing is even what we've learned on the international space station is in microgravity right so on the moon surface or on mars surface where the gravity is a little bit different you know closer to 1/6 on the moon closer to 1/3 on mars you know how is that going to affect biology we need again to do those studies to understand that better so mini you're one of those who thinks that we should be permanently inhabiting mars Well more than 
anything else as a scientist, I think we are curious. We want to know, you know, what is on, you know, how far down is the water? You know, can we use the water? Can we build a habitat where, you know, folks could spend some time there? Uh, definitely, you know, there is that desire as a scientist, as an explorer, to uh, explore our uh, you know, our environments there. And um, uh, also going back to some of the experiments that I've what, done. What are the experiments? Yes, so, so I have used model organisms because uh, it's very valuable getting studies done on humans and getting blood samples and all of that. So there's a lot of science you can do there. But then there's a lot of science that you really need to get tissue samples from inside uh, or you need to do a lot of very detailed molecular biology to understand the changes. So there's been a variety of different experiments I've done, you know, with my team, I should say, you know, uh, science is a team sport. It's team sport. You yeah. always do it with a group of collaborators team members and so on. So one of the ones that we've done uh, from my lab was looking at the changes in the brain. And uh, human brain. The human, well, so I was actually using the fruit fly fruit brain, fly. Uh, which is not that different in terms of its fundamental function, the uh, proteins that are used as transmitters to send information, uh, very similar. And so we we've, we've we found that in space, there were definitely effects on the brain, on the fruit fly brain, as a result of space flight. And what was also interesting is we had an experiment where we were using a centrifuge to create an artificial 1G environment. And we found that we were able to reverse, uh, partially reverse. Meaning 1G at the International at Space At the International Space Station. And we so were, you were creating artificial gravity at the International Space exactly. Station. Exactly for the fruit fry model. Exactly, and we were able to reduce some of the defects that we were seeing in the nervous system after flight when we brought the flies back down and aged them. So that's why actually I'm very excited with the experiment where uh, they're, they're um, gonna do an MRI of the uh, brains pre-flight and post-flight as part of the Axiom 4 mission, where they're doing neuroimaging with these MRI to look at the detailed changes in the brain. So given that we have found that with Drosophila, you know, changes in the brain, I'm very interested to see um, what some of the, on the, the Axiom 4 of the Axiom 4 data. But what are the other experiments which have been done on, on the International Space Station? I'm, I'm told they grow tomatoes, they grow... Absolutely. They grow, they grow uh, yes. salad, lettuce. lettuce Yes, All of that. Exactly. Tell me a little bit about that. Yes, so and plant they experiments. Also there. Yes, in fact, some of the tomatoes uh, were very well appreciated by the crew members. Um, but yes, some of the plant experiments have been very valuable and useful. We have, you know, a variety of different plant habitats on the International Space Station. And it's funny because, you know, the, the plant habitats have to be very well illuminated. So often you will see when the crew members are celebrating something, Something. you know one of the members has a birthday party or something they will often do it near the plant habitat <laughs> because it's, it's like the garden exactly, space. exactly exactly it makes you happy yeah. right and you have lights on and so on uh, so you have plants that have grown uh, I myself have done experiments um, looking at immune system function to see you know do bacteria like for example there's a specific kind of bacteria called serratia marcescens which can cause skin infections in humans but it can also affect and kill flies and so we looked at you know serratia exposed to space flight can cause increased uh, pathogenicity and and when those uh, uh, bacteria that were exposed to space were brought back to the ground they killed the fruit fly host faster than the ones that hadn't gone to space and what was really interesting is we took those and um, if you take those bacteria and you grow them on the ground um, under normal you know earth conditions and then you infect the flies again let's say the next morning after they've grown overnight then you lose that increased virulence. Um, and so my team and I, we did a study to understand what's happening, the molecular biology underlying why did these serratia bacteria become more pathogenic? What is the change and how are they killing the host fast? There are also, I'm told, 
some new species of bacteria which have been discovered at the International Space Station and there was an Indian from the Jet yes, Propulsion Lincoln. Laboratory. Yes, yes. Do you have, do you have any, because there was one of them which was named after our former president Kalam. Yes. What are those and, and why, do, why do you have new species growing there? Because they did it on the HEPA filters. Right, exactly. So, you know, actually the, this is also one of the advantages of doing studies in these enclosed environments like the International Space Station is it gives you a little bit of an insight into closed environments even on Earth. So. Uh, the more deep sequencing, you know, detailed sequencing that you do, uh, looking for microbes, you know, even on Earth, if you go to an environment that you haven't monitored before, you will probably find novel bacteria in those environments as well. So we carry environment, you know, bacterial uh, colonies on us, in us. We have lots of them. There are more bacterial cells in us than our exactly, human cells. Exactly, exactly. So if you do enough sequencing, you will find novel bacteria, you know, presumably really in any uh, uh, untapped environment. What was the name of that right? Indian scientist? I'm forgetting. Can you recall who, who it was from JPL? Uh, Venkat. Dr. Venkat. Yes, yes. And, 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 and Venkat, there's some organism, it's called Kalamensis. I remember that much. Yes, I don't remember do the full believe. name. Yes, that he, yes. He, he honored Dr. Kalam for That's that right. uh, That's right. particular. Correct. And are there other, any other, uh, other biology experiments which come to your mind which have excited you at the International Space Station? Yes, in fact, uh, so many really, you know, all of science uh, excites me, but there's one that uh, was really interesting that was done recently uh, as a collaboration between the Japanese Space Agency and NASA. And it was looking at rodents or mice actually as a model system, and they were using different gravity levels. So they were using Earth's gravity level, uh, moon's gravity level, Mars gravity level, and then microgravity and comparing the effect. And you know how we were talking earlier that, you know, partial gravity and microgravity in 1G can different. all have different effects. So that was a really interesting experiment uh, where comparing that and finding a threshold where for, and of course it depends on what you're looking at. You know, are you looking at bone density loss? Are you looking at immune system changes? Are you looking at uh, microbial uh, species inside your body. Um, and so this study was a really nice study looking at those changes at the different levels. So, so yeah, I mean, there are just so many good experiments that people do. But in general, astronauts go up and down and we've had over 700 astronauts. Yes. Uh, not all to the International Space Station, but yes. astronauts up and down. Yes. Uh, they go fit and come back fit. They do. They do. And a couple of things there, you know, astronauts are some of the fittest people that you'll find. So, so that helps a lot. Uh, another thing is that they are very uh, good about following certain, um, uh, you know, regimented procedures. Like you have to exercise a certain number of hours a Two day. Two hours a day. Exactly. And that's really important. And they follow that, right? Uh, their diet is very carefully crafted so that they get all the nutrients they need. Um, but, you know, over time, though, we've seen, especially in the early years when we were not so careful about quarantining crew before they went, uh, you know, people do get sick just like, you know, human beings sure. anywhere, right? You can get sick. And so uh, that's where now some of these procedures with the quarantining before they fly is very important. Uh, and then maintaining, you know, in the early days when they didn't know and they didn't do as much exper exercise, there would be more loss of, you know, bone mass and muscle mass. Uh, but now we've managed to reduce. And so that's the beauty of science, right? The more you understand the changes, the more you can counter them. And now they are coming back much healthier, sure. right? And, and we saw astronaut Sunita Williams run a mar marathon exactly. in space exactly. when she ran alongside the Boston Marathon. That's right, and, exactly. And, and she also stayed for 10 months and and within two days, she ran more than a mile. She yes. she, she came back yes, exactly. really recently. Exactly. So they are coming back much fitter than what they were earlier. Yes, I mean, and and Sunny and and all of these astronauts, of course, are you know fabulous specimens of, of human uh, beings. And so, um, uh, 
you know, I'm, I'm not at all surprised that she handled it so well and that after coming back, she recovered so well. She's also had a lot of experience in space yeah, before. Yeah, yeah. So that helps too, because you know what to expect. You know how to counter your own changes. And um, so, yeah, kudos to the whole team. So, so the biology which you do, experimentation at a basic level, yes. is contributing to longer duration flights, is that correct? That is correct. And you know, if you compare to the space shuttle days when we were doing experiments for 12 days, maybe 20 days if we were lucky, now on the International Space Station, people are doing longer and longer experiments. Because if you even did it as a sortie mission, you know, a, a, say a spacecraft, a, a, you know, vehicle takes you up and takes you down, that's a month long. But you can even stay for multiple increments, you know, and do many months of study. Multiple generations of plants have been grown. Multiple generations of fruit flies have been grown. Um, you know, other organisms, you know, sea elegans uh, and other models from Earth have been grown for longer and longer periods of time. So, so yes, absolutely. Would you be sad? Now that the end of life of the International Space Station is near and 2031, it could be retired? You know, well, so I would say that um, I absolutely celebrate the fact that the International Space Station was such a valuable lab for scientists for so long. But I'm also looking forward to the next platform. So the commercial LEO destination, which is going to be the next that will succeed. It could be Axiom, it could be WAST. Exactly, it could be we Haven, don't know. Or it could be the Axiom exactly. station, one of them. That's right, we don't know, you know, which one will be the one, or maybe there'll be two or three, you know, who knows. And we already have a Chinese space station all. That's right. And the Indian right. space and the station Indian is coming. one that's coming, exactly. So the more we have these platforms in space internationally, the more science we can do as a world community of scientists and the, the better off, I think, we'll be prepared for those future long duration missions. Thanks a lot for speaking to me, Dr. Sharmila. Thank you so much. And explaining the complexities of doing biology and human physiology experiments at the International Space Station in microgravity. So Absolutely. that was Dr. Sharmila Bhattacharya, a well-known biologist from NASA, telling us about the exciting science which happens at the International Space Station. And the basic fundamental is, if humans have to create a habitat outside Earth, we should be prepared for that. And all of this basic biology contributes towards that. So permanent habitation on the moon and possible permanent habitation on Mars. And you know where else humans can go. All in preparation to making sure that humans have a longer existence in this wide universe. Basic biology helping understand human presence on not just in space but also on earth because a lot of this feeds back for medicine on earth. In New Delhi, Pala Bagla for NDTV.